Hi, I'm Malachi. I'm the pastor and founder of Life's Word Ministry, and this is Today's Man Podcast. Today's Man Podcast was created and designed not only with the men in mind, but for both men and women alike. It's a show that will educate, encourage, enlighten, and to edify your life from a biblical and spiritual perspective. You know, it's my endeavor to share and talk about today's issues, problems, and yes, the successes of today's man through a biblical principle. I do hope that you will subscribe, like, and share our podcast episodes with others because by doing so, it boosts our on-air ratings. You can find us on Facebook, Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. Again, welcome to Today's Man Podcast, and I look forward to spending some time together. Hey now, welcome to Today's Man Podcast. Come on into the lounge and relax for a little while. We just want to chit-chat, have a conversation. There's a few things I want to discuss that lays heavy on my mind and my heart, heavy on my spirit, and I want us to talk about it. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Let's address it, shall we? So tonight... I want to welcome all the men, my brothers and my brothers. Welcome. I appreciate you stopping by and chilling with me for a little while. Let's just have a conversation between friends. How about that? Welcome to the women. I greet you as well. You're definitely welcome because anything that affects us as men affects you as well, especially tonight's program, tonight's show. Because we're going to be talking about silent screams. Seven things that hurt men. Let me ask you this. Do you know what really hurts your man? Well, we're going to talk about some of those tonight. I'm sure there are a lot more that we can talk about. But tonight, I just want to talk about seven. And I want to say this. Men, if... You're at a crossroad right now in your life and you don't have anyone you feel that you can talk to. I would certainly like to be that one friend that you can trust and you can talk to. I want to be that one that you can turn to to say, hey, man, this is what I'm dealing with. I just want to talk. I just want to be able to express myself without being judged. Well, you can do that. I want you to be able to reach out to me and I'll give you that information at the end of our show. But I want you to know that as a man of God, I want to be your spiritual friend. I want to be your spiritual brother, someone that you can lean on to know that I'm here praying not only for you, but I want to pray with you. So if That is all right with you, my friend. It's all right with me. So tonight, silent screams. Seven things that hurt men. Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I just want to tell the men that you are not alone. That God is with you wherever you go. So as we talk about some of the things that hurt men, some of the things that hurt you, I'm going to touch on some sensitive things. I'm going to touch on some funny things. I'm going to touch on some things that will bring awareness. But here's what I want to do. I want to talk to your woman. I want to talk to your wives. I want to talk to your girls. Because these are some of the things that you may not have discussed with them openly. And I want to be able to open that Pandora box because I realize 
in sharing certain things brings healing. And I also understand that certain things that are told have a way of being used against us. I'm a witness to that. There's things in my past that I've shared in certain relationships, thinking that she had my best interest at heart, thinking that I could trust her, thinking that, okay, we're together. I ought to be able to share with you some things in my life that I've had to deal with. But then when she got mad at me, she would turn those things against me, which I'm thinking, man, I can't trust you after all. And we shouldn't have to be in a relationship to where we can't trust our mate. So we're going to talk about those seven things that hurt men. Let's face it. If anyone needs encouragement, men need encouragement. Can I get an amen on that, my friend? Can I get an amen on that, brothers? As men, we try to act like we are so tough. We act like we can really handle everything on our own. But you know what? We can't. Because I know if we are honest, we would admit that we need to be lifted up just like anyone else does. I know I do. I, I need lifting up. I need encouragement. I need someone to tell me it's OK. But, you know, I have someone now in my life that encourages me. She feels when I'm hurting. She feels when there's an indifference and we're able to talk about it. And I have grown to trust her to be able to share certain things in my life with her that may hurt me. Yeah, it's still a little difficult. I'm going to be honest on that side. It's still a little difficult for me to open up completely, but God is helping me with that. So let me say this. It's a good thing that there are many encouraging Bible verses for men from which we can draw inspiration from. You might have looked at the Bible, read through the Bible, studied the Bible, and really didn't look at certain scriptures that specifically dealt with you and what you're dealing with, men. Because God knows we don't get encouragement too often. Now, we'll get it, but not too often. In the house and outside the house. And where we really need it is in the house. That's where we need the encouragement. And I'm sure you might be asking yourself right now, are there verses that speak a little more directly to me as a man and my issues? Well, I tend to think so. I also believe that men have challenges that women don't face on the same scale or level of intensity. Now, there's nothing wrong with that because we are all made differently. This is why I can't understand why some women feel they are as equal to men when it comes to asserting one's equality and physical abilities. And please know that there are some Bible verses that may mean more to one person over another or one gender over another based on what we are struggling with. I'm totally with women being liberated, women having the ability to think for themselves, having independence. Let me throw in, however, there are certain things that you as a woman are not equal to me as a man, especially when it comes to physical abilities. God didn't make us equal in that manner. Sure, there are women out there, bodybuilders. God didn't make us the same in our physical makeup. But even in that you're not as strong as we are as men. You can be defined in your physique. You can be toned tight and hard. But when it comes down to it, be honest. You really aren't as equal in certain areas as us men. And there really shouldn't be anything wrong with that. You have your place in life. We have our place in life. God has created you a certain way. He's created us a certain way. And that's why I know that there are some verses 
that may mean more to you than it does to me as a man. There are scriptures that deal with women. There are scriptures that deal with men. There are scriptures that deal with children. You can find anything you need in the Bible. Okay, let me talk to you, the women, for a brief minute right here. For those of you that are listening to me, let me say that I really appreciate you listening. But as we tackle this topic of silent screams, seven things that hurt men, I want to talk to you one-on-one -on -one right now. This is just you and me. Men, don't go too far. I just want to address this part of our show to your girl, to your woman, to your wife. Ladies, dear hearts, do you not know that there are many ways that you can hurt the man in your life knowingly and unknowingly? Of course, there are the obvious ones, such as being unfaithful or openly flirting with other guys. But sometimes the more subtle and perhaps completely unintentional things are the ones that really hurt him. And he won't even tell you about it. There are certain things that you might have said to him that really cut him to the core, but he won't even say anything. He won't even raise an eyebrow. Now, that could be because over the course of the relationship, you've browbeat him so that he won't even raise an eyebrow. But we won't take that as factual truth for right now. Because I know you love your man. I know you'll do anything for him, right? Of course you will. You know, all men, even myself, aspire to be the perfect image of masculinity and like to picture ourselves as being your very own personal Superman. We want to be your knight in shining armor. Now, you don't have to fawn over us like Lois Lane, but you question that masculinity at your own peril. That's why I feel that this show tonight, it's so needed. And we're going to address many of those things that hurt us as men. Let's talk about the seven things that hurt us as men. Number one, leave the past in the past. I know I don't have to echo that because that statement in and of itself speaks volumes. In Joshua 1, God spoke this to Joshua before he led the nation of Israel into the promised land. Can you imagine leading an entire nation into a foreign country to do battle with your enemies? Now, can you imagine this? Leading an entire nation into a foreign country to do battle with your enemies. One, battling your enemies. But then, two, you have to battle them in their country and on their own territory. And on top of that, Joshua's mentor, Moses, had died. So now Joshua is on his own. No wonder he felt a certain amount of fear and trepidation. It's fearful enough to start a new venture, but to have to start it without the person that has been training you and instructing you for several years has to be unnerving. Oh, you didn't know this was going to be Bible study, huh? <laughs> you know I got to slip some Bible in here. God's word to Joshua serves as an encouragement in times of fear. God promises to be with us wherever we go, no matter what insurmountable odds we may face. And that's even in our homes. Okay, let me tie it in for you that are listening and how it relates to leaving your past in the past. Joshua didn't go into the new land worrying about his past. 
He didn't go in conquering a new territory, thinking about the old territory he just left. Joshua went into the new territory knowing that God was going to be with him. So he left everything that would have hindered his progress in the past. Did you catch that? Here is what I want to encourage each of you with today. Women, don't talk about your past lovers. Men, don't talk about your past lovers. They don't exist. When you guys got together and became husband and wife, they don't exist any longer. The man wants to be the one and only guy in your life. The woman, she wants to be the one and only girl in your life. You want him to feel doubt and mistrust? Then talk about what used to be when you were involved with someone else. Now, when I say these things, it's good for the man as well as the woman. Even though I'm addressing some of this to the women, trust me, I'm not leaving the men out. But this is today's man, and I want to share this on the woman's side for right now to encourage the man. It's not a matter of being insecure. Let me say that. It's a matter of love and respect for the one you're with right now. That's what it's about. It's about the person you're with right now. Not that person you used to be with, but the guy that you're with right now. Now, I understand that your partner may know a few things about your past relationships, but trust me, he really doesn't want to talk about your past love interests. Unless it's making a point of how you're doing so much better now in your current relationship than you had in the past. And it's a matter of fact conversation. Oh, matter of fact, you know what? You do more for me. Matter of fact, I feel so much more love from you. Matter of fact, you make me feel like a woman. Matter of fact, you know what I'm saying? But other than that, leave the past in the past. And if there is an ex-spouse, Lord, help us here. This issue with ex-spouses can implode so quickly. I can be a witness Myself, I don't have to ask, can I get a witness? I'm a witness. Here is something that can cause much division in any good relationship. So if there is an ex-spouse, please have open dialogue and set some good, respectable boundaries within this new relationship. And as you're moving forward in your relationship, And in that open dialogue, here are a few things that need consideration. Are there children? If so, how is the relationship between the parents? And will it be a problem in the future? How stable are you when it comes to the ex? Meaning, can you handle them having interaction with one another on behalf of the children? These are some serious questions that need to be addressed before one even considers entering into a relationship where there are children involved. I don't care how strong someone may think they are in their emotions. They're not that mentally strong when it comes to the emotions of dealing with an ex-spouse. I know personally because I have some ex-spouses. Some of you know me, know my story. Others that don't know my story, your eyebrows have probably arched from hearing that. Let me say this. Since we're just having a conversation between friends, it's sad that I've had to spend many a day fighting and arguing about things in my past. Things that had nothing to do with the person I was in a relationship with. And I'll be the first to say That it was not worth the energy I wasted trying to overcome the frustration of someone else's insecurities. You know, now that I think about it, 
I've been divorced close to 30 years from my first wife. And we don't see or communicate as we did in the beginning because our two children are grown now. And my oldest has children of her own. And for whatever reason, there has been tension in a couple of my relationships because of her and my second wife. And I'm like, why? And the only answer that seems to surface is because they came first and I have children involved. That will always be an issue in someone else's mind, even if there is never a thought of that person ever. Trust me, the current mate is thinking. And they will think about them in the relationship. They might not say anything to you, but that's always going to be resonating in the back of their mind is the ex. Especially if you have children. Now, thank God that I don't have that issue in my current marriage. I have a wonderful wife. I have a loving wife. I have a saved wife. I have a spirit filled wife. I have a beautiful wife. I have a woman that is not insecure in who she is. And she's definitely not insecure about who I am and what I'm doing. That's God. But that took time for me to really be blessed into that situation. That's another story. You know, the human mind. Let's talk about the mind. Because when we start thinking about our past and we start thinking about the exes, everything has to deal with the mind. And I know the human mind can play some serious tricks on you if you allow yourself to entertain them. That's where we get into trouble because we start entertaining certain thoughts. This is why it is so important to have the mind Paul talked about in Philippians 2.5. Let this mind be in you. What mind? Which was also in Christ Jesus. If you don't get control of your mind and the thoughts, you will drive yourself crazy over something that had nothing to do with you. So for the sake of peace in your life and in the sake of peace for your husband's life, leave the past in the past. Number two. Don't make him feel bad for bringing in less income. I know this has been an issue down through the ages. Understand this one thing. It's part of a man's genetic makeup for him to assume the role of the hunter and the provider. So never belittle his job or his salary. Doesn't matter how meager or insignificant it may be to you. Remember, your shared income is just that. Shared income. Rosanna Mahadai, a wealth advisor at Steel Peak Wealth Management in Southern California, stated the most successful relationships I've seen are those where the partners value each contributions made to the marriage with income being one piece of the larger puzzle, she said. Each spouse brings in their own contribution, even if one is less quantifiable. Doesn't matter how much income one or the other is bringing in, you're bringing it in together so you can build together and work together. Well, Bradford Pine, a wealth and financial advisor in New York, said that the key to navigating the income situation is to never make your spouse feel guilty for earning less. Besides, it's very possible that fortunes could change in the future and you may need your spouse's financial and emotional support. So instead of arguing over unequal earnings, remind yourselves of your shared financial goals, paying off your debt, increasing your net worth and saving for retirement should be done as a team, regardless of who considers themselves the breadwinner. Well, I say amen to that. And let me add this. If you are to be partners in all, then remember that when it comes to the finances. And if the man makes less than you, don't make him feel bad for bringing in less income. 
You're on the same team. And when one wins, you both win. You're in this together. This is a team that we play together. We strategize together. My wife makes more money than me. I'm not ashamed to say that. Yes, I make okay money, but she makes big money over me. I don't consider that a threat because we're together as one. She makes six figures. I'm in the three-quarter range. So I'm not tripping because in the end, if we need something, we just go and get it. And I said, we, if she needs something, we talk about it. And I end up getting it for her. Even though she makes more money than me, I still like to spend money on her. We have several accounts, her account, my account, our account, investment accounts. We have money set aside to do what we need to do as a family. We have money set aside to do what she needs to do for her, for me. (laughs) We have money set aside for me to do what I need to do for her. But it's all together so don't make him feel bad about bringing in less income i'm sick and tired of hearing women talk about i want a man that makes more money than me okay there's nothing wrong with that per se but when you start making that a gospel that's where we have problems because now you're going to intimidate that good man because now he's thinking well she you know she's tripping she that's all she thinks about You might be missing a good man because you think he don't make enough money. Well, is it really about the materialistic things now? Because that's what it sounds like. But if you have a good man, you know he's a good man. And he has a job and he's working hard and he loves you. That shouldn't be a problem. How often have you been in a situation to where you completely forgot to introduce your man? You're outside somewhere. If you meet an old friend or acquaintance in the street or at a party, at a function, at church, don't forget to introduce your partner. Don't forget to introduce your husband. Leaving him out will make him feel insignificant. That could leave him a little more upset than you may think. Our third silent scream is don't forget to introduce him. You never want your man to think it isn't a big deal not introducing him because a man's mind will wander the globe thinking about how come you didn't introduce him, especially if it was to another man. Thoughts will fill his mind like, hmm, was that an ex? Did she have sex with him? Why didn't she introduce me to him like she did the others? Never let him come to his own conclusions. It will not be good. You never want to leave a man to his own thoughts. How would you feel if he didn't introduce you to a woman he just happened to bump into while you two were walking through the mall? You know, the exchanging of hellos and smiles. The brief laughter as they reflect on when they last saw each other and then nothing. She says her goodbyes and walks away. Maybe he forgot her name. Maybe he just didn't think about it. Either way, it just leaves a bad taste in one's mouth and way too many questions unanswered. Here's a little tidbit. One way I have gotten through an awkward introduction of someone that I could not think of their name was to introduce my wife first before the conversation broke out. Here's my thinking in that. Let the other person say what their name is. Now, if they don't say what their name is, as I hope they would, now that's a problem. It was a good try. Now, You're going to have to ask what that person's name is again because you forgot what it was. That could be awkward. I already know that it don't take much for the mind to go astray and create a mind full of explosive content. 
of who that person really is and how well was the friendship truly. Now, my wife will tell you that I always make it a point to introduce her, even if I don't remember the other person's name. I will never forget to introduce her. I don't have that problem. I'll say, hi, this is my wife, Christine. (laughs) And I'll just leave it there because I might not remember that person's name. But you know what? Here's here's a safe way to get through that. You know, I'm sorry. I don't remember your name. What's your name again? And just get it out the way and then move on from there. Number four, never make comments that would question his manhood. Oh, come in a little closer on this one. You never make light of your man's manhood. Even a lighthearted jab about his manhood could really wound him. And I'm not talking about his strong manly build. What I'm referring to is, okay, let me put it this way. He may not be hung like a adult movie star, but God didn't create all men equal. I don't know why. Do you know why? If you know why, please let me know. But in any case, you love him like he is. Take your man in your hands. Look him in the eyes and smile and say, you the man. That will boost his confidence more than you know. Let your man know that he is the only man in your world. Let him know that he is your king, baby. You my king. Love who he is. After all, you married him for all the above listed on the wedding vow sheet. So, when he starts not being able to keep up or perform the way he used to. Can I get an amen? Keep on loving him. Keep on encouraging him. Keep on working with him. That's your man. Because if you don't work with him, guess what? Somebody is always lurking and willing to lend an ear. Oh, you having problems? Oh, let's talk about it. Oh, I'll work with you. No, work with him. You're a team, remember? And teams work together in making the marriage greater. Make the marriage greater. (laughs) That should be the slogan, right? Make the marriage greater. Build him up every chance you get. Our bodies are not built the way your body is built. Have you not realized that yet? Look in the mirror, stand side by side. Now, that might be a little embarrassing sometimes, but you are together, you're married, you're in this for the long haul. We are not the energizing bunny. Hello? We are not that energizing bunny. And we don't have the ability to keep on going and going and going and going and going. Can I get a witness? as many as you claim you can, unless there's some type of help from a medical or pharmaceutical enhancement pill. Some of you is like, woo, where can I find that? So in the case that he has timed out again, you know, timed out. What? That was only a minute. Don't put him down and don't make a joke about it. Don't make a joke about his inability to stay hard. Because psychologically, you will kill his drive and his feelings to the point that he will start withdrawing from the bedroom mentally and physically. He will totally check out physically. He will totally check out mentally. He'll totally check out emotionally. His mind will cause his body to literally check out do to you making jokes about it sex is a very important thing yes it is it's very important to the marriage and it should be important to each of you and each of you should be satisfied 
So take care in caring for him in that area because it's very hard for a man to regain his confidence sexually after he has been wounded by his wife. Even if it's in jest, never make comments that would question his manhood. Number five, tell him how proud you are of him. Do you tell him how proud you are? When's the last time you said it? Now, if you have to think about it, shame on you. Just say it. The best way to let him know how proud of him you are is to just say it. Say, honey, I am so proud of you. You know, my wife tells me, honey, I am so proud of you. I am so thankful that you're in our lives. I'm so thankful you're my husband. I thank God for bringing you into my children's life. I'm just so proud to be your wife. How often do you talk to your man like that? There's ways of improving your relationship. One language at a time. And the reason why I say that is because Dr. Gary Chapman has a book about five love languages and how important it is for us to understand what our mate's love languages are. Do you know what your spouse's love language is? My wife has a couple of love languages. One is words of affirmation. She enjoys hearing me say good things about her, nice things about her, wonderful things about her. Babe, you look good. Your hair is, man, your hair is whipping today. It smells so good. Babe, you look good in them jeans. So she loves to hear words of affirmation like, you're awesome. You're terrific. You're a wonderful woman. You're an awesome mother. You're an awesome wife. She enjoys hearing those. And the other is acts of service. She enjoys doing acts of service, whether she's doing it or someone's doing it or whether I'm doing it for her. Acts of service. Because what you do speaks louder than what you say. I enjoy physical touch. I enjoy receiving gifts. And I also like giving gifts. So his love language might be for you to tell him that you're proud of him. Find out what his love languages are because they speak louder than anything else in his life. You might be thinking he's acting out, but he's trying to let you know what his love languages are. So you can cater to those love languages. There's a place in, inside of every man that wants to be told how good he is. That's the little boy inside looking for acceptance and approval. We need that. We want to be accepted. We want approval from our wife. And I'm going to tell you again, there's always going to be someone lurking, trying to find out how they can take care of your man. But you know what? It doesn't stop there, just in the acceptance and approval side. Tell him why you are proud of him. It means a lot to hear that you are, for one, and then to know why you're proud of him. It would really make his day. So from now on, make it a point to tell him how proud of him you are. And yes, he's listening to this podcast right now because it is, of course, today's man. But he still needs to know it and he needs to hear you say it. So if he is near you, turn to him and say, honey, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Number six, never compare him to other men. I should have a bell every time I say these things, it just ding, ding, <laughs> but never compare him to another man. One thing you should never, ever, ever do is compare your husband to other husbands. In fact, any man, we're dealing with egos and pride here. 
And when you make statements about other men and how great they seem to be and you wish he was like that, he may not say anything to you yet. But inside of him, a whole lot of discomfort and humiliation is going on. And when he has had his feel, you better believe it will all come oozing out all over you. So by doing this, you are killing him emotionally, you're killing him mentally, and you're even killing him spiritually very, very slowly. When you compare him to another man, it's like taking a small chisel and you're chiseling his heart. And before long, he's not going to have a heart for you any longer. Your man may not be a super stud and nor does he have to be. Let me make that clear. He doesn't have to be a super stud. But most men still see themselves as being the protector as well as the provider for his woman. And if you don't want him to compare you with the May issue of Victoria's Secret, okay, June's issue of Playboy, then maybe you should stop comparing him to other men. Start looking for things about your husband that you do love and appreciate. Revisit how and why you fell in love with him in the first place. What are all the great things he's done for you? Think about it. Can you name off a couple? A couple of the great things he's done for you already. How did he make you feel? How does he make you feel? He may not be perfect, but he was perfect enough to fall in love with and say yes when he asked you to marry him. Then all of a sudden now you're starting to find out all of his flaws, huh? Ain't that something? There will be times when he will fall short of pleasing you. But you know what? You should already know that you are not perfect yourself. That could have been why he married you. Uh oh Because he knew he wasn't going to find the perfect one, so he settled for you. But I'm not going to say that. We're we not claiming that. In Romans 3.28, we are reminded, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So when your husband falls short and disappoints you from time to time, and he will, remember the grace that God gives to you. How much grace have you given your husband in the past? Okay, let's stop for a moment. Think about it. Stop complaining about what he isn't. Stop complaining about what he doesn't do. And start complimenting on what he is good at. No matter how small it is, we all want to feel that we can accomplish something for our wives, however great or small it is. Remember, all grass is greener from a distance. It's not until you get closer and your vision is focused that you find out what you thought was grass is actually weeds. So be careful with your words and never compare him to other men. Number seven, our final silent scream of things that hurt men. Never talk down to him in front of others. All right, come closer. No, closer. Even closer, I want to whisper something into your ears. Are you close? Great. If you have a criticism to make or a sensitive issue that needs to be discussed, then it's best to do it when you are alone. That's it. That's all I want to say. You can go back now. <laughs> It really doesn't matter if it's just the children or not, because making a man look small or even appearing to in front of his friends or family will really be a deflation of his masculinity. And you have just caused him to withdraw into his nothing box. You know, all men do have a nothing box. I got a nothing box. 
my wife be teasing with me. I'll be sitting and just looking and not saying nothing, not not really hearing what the conversation is, not responding like I normally do. And she'll ask, babe, you must be in that nothing box. <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, I'm in that nothing box. It's a room filled with nothing but space. It's quiet in the nothing box. Nothing else is going on in the nothing box. It's a place where we can withdraw from all unnecessary noises and comments. The mind of a woman is so complex and full that every room in your head is completely filled up. Just cluttered with things, stuff, comments. (laughs) That's why women can't understand how and why we can just zone out. Lights on, but nobody present. Whether it's genetic or whether it's the way that we were brought up. Most men and women have have preconceived ideas of what they should be to their partner. It may be right or it may be wrong, but a woman who knocks her man's masculinity in public, even in jest, will hurt him dearly. It's just the same with a man who will hurt a woman if he questions her femininity in public. If you want to avoid relationship problems, and I pray that you do, then here are some good advice for you. Now, I'm not a clinical psychologist. I'm not a psychotherapist. I'm not a therapist whatsoever. I'm just a man that has hurts. I'm a man that have pain. I'm a man that needs encouragement. So I know what a man needs. I know what a man needs to hear. I know what a man needs desires from his wife mainly because of what i've dealt with over my life mainly because of the experience that i've had in different relationships god has allowed me to go through for this present time i always wanted to know why i'm going through all this why am i going through this lord now i see it's to be able to help someone else but here's some good advice from a non- clinical psychologist at all times show love at all times show that you care and at all times show respect to your partner when you're out in public or around family and friends now you may not hear him but he is silently screaming out in the inside of himself from the things that you've said and do to him. And it's hurting and scarring him deeply. What, you didn't think we got hurt? You didn't think men get scarred? Well, let me be the first and let me be the representative of all men that have been hurt and scarred by a woman and say, yes, We do get hurt and we carry just as many scars. I have been hurt many times. But you know what I do? Because I felt that I shouldn't allow myself to seem weak. So what I do, I'd lash back as a defense. I'd scream and holler or I might say something that will hurt them even worse. And that's the thing with most men. Their one defense is either lash back or withdraw or both. I've had so much pain inside that I'm still trying to figure out why I say and do certain things. Because of all of the pent up unreleased hurt that's inside. And when a certain button is pushed, it's like riding on an elevator. Once that floor has been reached, the bell rings and the door opens and everything inside comes out. So you got to be careful when you start pushing them buttons because you don't know what floor you might end up on. Men hurt just like women, but are more apt to keep it inside of them. Men don't have as many support groups as women do. I don't see a great number of men coming together and talking about what hurts them and how they can deal with their own fears and pain. And God forbid if a man cries. Oh, wait, let a man cry and all bets are off on his masculinity. 
It's because we've been conditioned to keep it in, locked up inside of us. Don't show your soft side. Don't let them see you cry. Don't let them see you cry out in fear of being called weak. Men ought to be able to talk about what hurts them. Men should be allowed to come together and just talk and cry it out without feeling a certain type of way. But you know what? Someone may need this. Let me add this one very important point right here. My father taught me that real men do cry. We just cry at the right time and for the right reasons, not because we are emotionally unstable. No one should be emotionally unstable, but there are some that are very unstable in their emotions. That's where God has to be the center of our joy, the center of your joy. Yes, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Let me tell you, many of you men, it's morning time. Let me quote the entire scripture so you know what it says. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Psalms 30 and 5. If we're going to quote it, let's quote the whole thing. What this tells me is that pain, sorrow, grief, disappointments, headaches, and relationship problems is but a moment. But God's favor is for life, a good life, a peaceful and joyful life. How many of you want to be peaceful and joyful in your relationship? Men. Are you tired? Are you hurting? Are you in pain? Do you need peace? Do you need joy? Even if that means being by yourself for a while, you need to seek peace from God. Let me ask this. Where are all the support groups for men? Where are all the just for men, quote unquote, just for men conferences? And I'm not talking about mega anything. We get enough being preached at. We need conferences that deal with the heart of a man. A big nothing box conference. This is where we can go to meet other men that are feeling and dealing with many of the same issues we're dealing with. The same pain, the same frustration, the same agony, the same heartache. Let me say this in closing. Because I feel myself getting tuned up and turned on here. Men, you're not soft just because you express your feelings. You will find a long list of faithful men who cried out in the Bible. And they were some of the strongest men recorded. Let me give you a few of the men that was recorded that cried. But were some of the strongest men. Write these scriptures down and read them later in your alone time, in your study time, in your man time, in your nothing box time. Brother Job over in Job 16, 20. Brother Joseph in Genesis 43, 30. David and Jonathan, 1 Samuel 20, 41. Elisha, 2 Kings 8, 10 through 12. Hezekiah, 2 Kings 20 and 5. Jeremiah, he was the weeping prophet. Jeremiah 9 and 1 and Jeremiah 13 and 17. Nehemiah, Nehemiah 1 and 4. Paul in Acts 20, 19. Timothy in 2 Timothy 1, 4. John over in Revelation 5 and 4. And last but not least, Christ Jesus himself. John eleven thirty five, 35. Shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. The real men of the Bible, the real men of God were not afraid to cry. In fact, 
Many times God was pleased by the attitudes and the emotions behind the tears of faithful people, both men and women. We see women will break and cry at the drop of a hat because they're emotional beings. When it comes to hurting, the list can be very lengthy, but we have to keep in mind that we are all human and we have a tendency to hurt one another. You know, when we first got married, my wife and I, monthly it seems as though we were going through this like clockwork, constantly going back and forth, trying to figure out the other person. And she was dealing with some woman issues, you know, your monthly. And whenever she would approach her monthly a week in advance, her whole demeanor changed. I'm like, why is she acting like that? What is wrong with her? I thought she was crazy. I'm like, God, I unmarried a crazy woman. I thought you said she was the one. But it was her monthly cycle was dealing with her psyche. And I had to learn that side of her. I had to understand, okay, a week before her monthly, this is what begins to happen. And so I started catering to that. I started catering to her monthly before her monthly hit. See, we have to be mindful of those closest to us and how they feel and why they feel the way they feel. Why are they acting the way they're acting? There's a reason behind why people act the way they act. You got to find out what that why is and then deal with that why. Help them through it. Yes, there are those of us that are extremely sensitive. But don't tell everybody that. Don't tell your wife that she's sensitive because you might be adding fuel to an already hot fire. Even if they are sensitive to their feelings, still treat them with love and an everlasting love as well as kindness. Jeremiah said, the Lord has appeared of old to me saying, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Jeremiah 31 and 3. Need to remember that. With love and kindness have I drawn you. You want to draw your mate? Draw him with love and kindness. The same love that Jesus shows you every day. It's the only way we can draw them back to Christ. Silent screams. They're not as silent as you may think. Seven things that hurt men. Learn what they are. Minister to your man. Love your man. And I'm praying and believing that he'll love you back. So as promised, here's how you can keep in touch with me. You can write to me at Today's Man, I Need to Talk. Again, that's Today's Man, I Need to Talk at gmail.com. Remember that God is calling you men to be a Today's Man. Hey, that's our show for today, folks. The clock on the wall says that's all. Be sure to join us again right here on Today's Man Podcast. I'm Pastor Malachi.